you know, we, we've shown a, a number of films here over the last last year or so. I mean, and I, and I think back to, to a film called The First Rainbow Coalition that we showed last summer. Uh, I think back to uh, Love and Solidarity that we showed just earlier this year. And, you know, there is this, there is this, this, this through line, this theme of, of people doing stuff. What, what, <laughs> what, 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 what John Lewis called making good trouble. Um, and, you know, I, you know I, I, I wonder and I think about kind of that you see yourselves in this film and, and you know, what, what, does it, what does it tell us about, about our struggles and about the people who, who, who really, who really lead us and organizing. Yerali, you have some thoughts. Yeah, I love that you say that, Doris, because it, it also reminded me of the many times that I've heard you speak and you telling a story and the way that there's so much power behind our stories. And I, I felt similar. I was like, oh, this could be Doris' story, but from another time. But I, I definitely agree I think because of my background. I'm formerly undocumented a migrant. Um, I, I, I identify as being mixed race. And so I've done a lot of immigrant rights organizing, but also union organizing, both when I was at UC Irvine in my undergrad, but now as we have gotten our contract, but we still need to renegotiate it um, pretty frequently. And so I really see kind of the film showing that, the way that you can really truly build these multiracial, multi-ethnic coalitions, but also to have people like Doris Hill today and people like myself from different statuses, right? Whether it be TPS, green card holders, people who are undocumented, I think it did a really good job of kind of demonstrating the power that comes from reaching out to, at least in, in the farm workers movement, the way that there was a really big coalition between Mexican and Filipinos and the way that you have to organize with all of these different communities in order to bring true change but also that we have kind of this, this spectacular portrayal of Maria Moreno as someone who did a lot, but whose story we don't really know about. And so this documentary really shows how oftentimes the activism of women is not recognized as the activism of men. And so I thought bringing light to that, to the powerful work that this woman did even before Cesar Chavez, I thought it was really, really astounding. Sorry. So, and Doris, can you can you do you, can you talk a little bit about the, the work that you do with with the uh, you know with the union trying to organize and 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 what the challenges are, but also you know whether there are the you know, there was a way in which uh, uh, Maria Moreno had such such a, a vitality and a determination. I mean, mm. uh, you know, I'm I'm wondering about how you how you go about doing your work as you as, even as you kind of do your job. I mean, can you talk a little bit about the organizing work that you do? Yes, I, I will be happy to do that. <clears throat> you know, sometimes. Um, people we have reaction to when to the pain when we suffer and if i saw my life four or five years ago i i can recognize hmm. me anymore because my life changed my life changed in the way when i start uh, be uh, you know involved in the union because sometimes we are a union members for years but if we are don't know what is what is the means of the union, it's like it's, it's I don't know how to explain you, but it's you I don't know about. But when I start involved and I start learning, because everything is educate ourselves. I educate what is mean to be a union leader. I and and this is helped me a lot because it's the way I understand when supervisors, you know, treat bad us, like 
I, I put your example. We have a supervisor like um, he discriminate my coworkers for their color. And, and when we raise our voices to put the complaint, we suffer retraliation. And what's so sad for me, because we speak out, I know the supervisor got fired, but how management manipulates the people to against you because you speak out because of, to help your coworkers are suffer because people don't understand when you discriminate someone, you hurt emotional. And that process, I was so sad and I say, I hate being the union. I wanna just get out from Harvard. I hate Harvard. I was put this, I hate this place. But after uh, the administration uh, of the last, last administration, uh, this guy Trump and the TPS, and this is issue like her, my family. And when I feel like I, I, I will lose my stars and I can be separate from my, ki from, from my kids, is something inside give me the power to, to, to work. Like I start, I, I have a friends in Harvard, Jenny V, Ed, like they was a big support in that moment, introduced me uh, to different organizations in Harvard, introduced me with the students. I start work with the students in different organization. It's like my life totally changed. N now I feel like, you know, even sometimes I feel scary <laughs> when I speak out because, but same time I feel comfortable. I say, okay, if I help my coworker and I got troubles, I have the whole Harvard community in my side. And I know if uh, management or whatever wanna give me a hard time, I feel the whole community will be in my side to support me and say, you know, fight back. And this is made me more strong. When you work, when you communicate, when you build the relationship between the, the community, because it's very important, like, I, I, I saw Maria Moreno, it's very important to, to build a connection between workers, between students, between the community and, and organize and work together because I, I, if no work together, we will lose. But if we work, we will win any issue. Like here, I feel like I don't care from where we are, what is the race, and then we are a human beings. And this is, 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 is the all matters. Yeah, I, see you, I see you shaking your head there, you really. So, I mean, and it's true, I mean, like, you know, it, 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 for all of us who are part of, of, of of Harvard, whatever that means. Uh, I think there are very few instances of real community, right? I think uh, there, you know, there, there are all of these factions and differences and ways in which we are kept apart. But but the the, the organizing, I think, you know, it, it try you know tears down some of those barriers, right? Uh, it doesn't remove them and it doesn't eliminate them, but it allows us to then start to, to connect uh, as community members. And, uh, can, and you really, can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in, you know, in that regard? I mean, and if you see that, see that too? Yeah, absolutely. I want to echo in second and third what Doris is saying, which is that 
a lot of the work that our unions have been doing is that you have to build these coalitions with other people. And that's the reason why I've heard of Doris' story so many times that we have been able to connect with other workers that work at different levels, not just graduate workers, but custodials, um, people who are research assistants, people who are teaching fellows. And we see that a lot. And so I love that. I, I love the quote. And that's why I put it in the chat. En unidad hay fuerza. There is, there is a lot of strength in unity in building these coalitions. And absolutely, I, I see that in, in a lot of the things that have been happening most recently and most unfortunate around Cornell West and around my advisor, Lorja Garcia Peña, who didn't get tenure. Um, and so there's been a really big push from graduate students and undergrads here at Harvard to build ethnic studies because Harvard does not have an ethnic studies program. And so there's been a lot of push for people to sustain that. And even from us graduates, there is a secondary in Latinx studies that was spearheaded and maintained by Lorja Garcia Peña. And when she's gone, it's, it's kind of in a liminal positions. And so we see that Harvard isn't necessarily kind of keeping these traditions. There isn't really like a strong Latinx studies programs or Asian American studies programs. And so a lot of, a lot of, a lot of the organizing that we have been doing is that to make sure that there is something established there so that we are, we are able to learn our histories. And even we see that with H, uh, HG UAW, which is the Graduate Student Union and especially when the pandemic hit and when international students were not going to be allowed to stay in the United States, we saw a really big coming together of the community because in many times we do see some, some of these silos. And so literally everyone rallied behind international students, making sure that they were still going to be protected, even if we weren't allowed to be physically on campus. And when we were told we had to go home, right? But with the closing came precarious statuses that come into play, but also food insecurity, people who didn't have homes, uh, people who didn't have ideal family homes and that weren't just able to go pack up and leave like a lot of people. And so we really saw a community coming together that, that, that started calling this out. Like what is gonna happen to international students? What is gonna have happen to people who do not have housing security? or food security and that we have to leave. And so we saw a lot of organizing really, really quick when that announcement came. And unfortunately it was rescinded and it didn't affect international students. But I see that in many different ways that you have to reach out. But as Doris emphasized, you need to reach out to many people. You need to make sure that workers and students and faculty and staff, they're united. And we see we saw that in the efforts to unionize and also to make sure that we had a contract in place. And so tomorrow, yeah, for those of you that, that are interested, we are going through contract negotiations and bargaining through the union for people that wanna support. Uh, people are bargaining as we speak and it has been happening for a really long time. We want a lot of protections from sexual harassment, um, but also people like me who are married, who do not have a lot of financial security and who want health care and other things for our spouses and people who have families. And so I, I love that. I, I, I love En Unidad de Fuerza because that's truly the case. And we see that through the documentary, but through a lot of the amazing work that is happening around Harvard right now. So, you know, and I think, you know, a couple of things, you know, uh, Doris said, I, I, I wonder about kind of what, what the experience was in the last year around COVID and, 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 and what kind of organizing has been necessary around that. But, but the other thing I, I, I want to comment on, you know, is that there's this quote from the beginning of the film that, that I wrote down yesterday. And again, you know, this uh, I'm telling you the truth because truth's been hiding, she said. Truth's been hiding, right? <laughs> and, um, and she put it out in the open, right? So, you know, it's kind of, you know, and, and I think, you know, look, I, look, let's, you know, we have you two and Marita Moreno, we have three strong women uh, voices here. And I, and I wonder kind of, what your thoughts are on, on, on the role and the importance of, of, of women's voices in this movement. So Doris, one thing is about, one thing is about kind of COVID 
And the other thing, you know, is about uh, the role and voices of women, you know, as organizers and leaders. Yeah, uh, you know, when the pandemic start in Harvard, in, um, in Harvard, uh, sent, sent students home, it was so hard, you know, it's the worry about my coworkers and as a union leader, uh, I'm the Chausto or like people running, you know, I, I, I sometimes I feel like they think I have, you know, like a, like a stick and I will fix everything in the moment. <laughs> and they come into me worry about, oh, we need mask. I don't wanna work in this place. Uh, they not give me mask. And we start asking about mask and, and they say no, because the priority is the hospitals in this moment. And, and we understand, no, the priority is the hospitals, but we know they, we we feel they they not care about custodial because we cleaning places. We, you know, we work together in groups, and and, and, and you know, we was really worried about that. And I have a a friend is um, I think is the. Uh, I think he 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 is with Jarelli in uh, the student union is um, Brandon, and we have a conversation. And he called me, Doris. What is what is the help custodians need in this moment? And I mentioned about uh, the the mask. We need mask. We need uh, goggles because people in, in that moment was worried. And he start organize, you know, help me. And, and this is how important it is to build a coalition, to build a relationship. Because I, I was like, you know, no even the leaders of my union called me, call me the other leader, the other union, what do we need? You know how amazing it is when you build that and um, he start a, organized like between his college, like uh, how or who can donate those masks for custodial. After, uh, I think uh, Maren was for the student unions too. He, uh, she shared my story in Twitter about, you know, like Harvard no, no give us the mask and we was cleaning because in that, in that time, we had to clean 600 dorms for uh, international students. And we had to clean those dorms in three days. You know, the running and they, <coughs> they not follow the protocols to protect us. And my coworkers was so disappointed, they were so mad, but when students bring those masks and I start sharing with them, they was so happy. You know, how, how students help us, but, and this is help us to put the pressure in, in the management because it's a moment when we say, okay, we not continue work if you not give masks to us, we will be here. It's not like we not refuse to work, but if you want, uh, like us to continue work, you had to provide it mask to us. I don't know how this guy found mask, but he bring a, a you know a big box of mask for everybody. But in that moment, and I will share this because I feel it's very important. I like share when my friend Jenny shared my story in Facebook was like people send me feedback, but when Maren shared in Twitter, I couldn't sleep that night because everybody replied, everybody called me, even the news start calling me. And I, and I start, I spoke to them, but after I, 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 I feel scary, you know, because it's Harvard University, and a simple custodial is complaining. 
I, I was so scary. I, I even, I was in a home and I say, oh, I, I was like thinking, oh, if I return, they will fire me. Because, you know, you never know what happened. But what I found out, they respect me more because they know always if they make a mistake, I will speak up for my uh, uh, co-workers. And same things happening now, you know, with the vaccine. I know the vaccine Harvard can control because this is by the state, but I feel the way they distribute the vaccine is it, it's, it's kind of like, I feel they, they had to organize and thinking more who is the people really need because the way they did is uh, they probe provided the, the vaccines to Harvard University, but they split by department. And I, I was thinking it's very important, like they not think custodials and students is the people really need fears because those people are in a home, work for home. I feel they can wait. And, and, and I, I don't know how, how to make this change like, Harvard thinking different way how to organize things. And I think this is good things. We are a union leaders because we are the only people think that way. You know what I mean? And, and I think we had to show you then how to split things because I, I believe like a staff work for home, professor work for home, they can wait in for the vaccine, but essential workers like custodial, people working in the kitchen. We are in the campus and we really need, and you know, like we waiting for long, like all my coworkers, they got, they got vaccinated for them or own resource. And I was laughing because just today I, re I received email from Harvard. The next week will be a clinic in, in Harvard. It's too late. Come on, it's late. It's students, if, you know, the community is ready in Harvard the last semester. So like, it's, you know, it's, I think we had to educate them how to organize. And, and I think this is <laughs> what I can say about that. And sorry that I forgot the last question. Uh, but, I, but, but so, but you answered it because the last question was about women, you know, <laughs> taking charge and right. Women, you know, it's time for you to teach the teachers. You know, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, you know, I feel like as a woman and be a leader, sometimes we have some issues that people don't recognize our voices. Because if we are organized between a men, I, I feel all, always they recognize that person, then our own job. And this is, I see in different, not just in harbors, I, I saw those things everywhere. You know, for us, it's, it's more hard and we have more power. I feel like, you know, when it's, I have people, even my coworkers coming to me and say, Oh my goodness, you have a pain for three men. Like the way you talk, the way you say things, like, you know, it's scary. And I say, why I had to scare? That why? Like, you know, because what did they, they will do it? Harvard, what it will do is just fire me, but I will find the other job. When I decide coming to this country, I don't know where I will work. You know, I just had to start, but why I had to feel scary? So, like why? And I think this is, I learned like how the community not recognize our, our job. And, and I feel because it's sad, you know, this story of Maria, I, I, I you know, I didn't hear, I didn't hear for her before, just today. And it's an amazing story. It's, it's, you know, and I hope one day my, grandch my grandchild can see a story like this about me. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, because it was also the story of her family, right? I mean, you know, she was, you know, uh, but Yareli, so did you want to say something on this too? Uh, I mean, I, I would just echo that. I think that being a woman in these spaces that are thought to be male dominated is really complicated just because sometimes you have to do a little bit more to be recognized. And as, as Doris said, I have gotten similar comments of like, you sound so calm or you sound so passive. How are people going to take you seriously? And it's really about the message and the things that you're saying and the struggles that you face in your story, but also the work that you're doing that matters. And I think, right, like we have a very particular idea of what people should sound like and what they should be doing and how eloquent they should be. But no, it's about the story that you tell and it's about you trying to do that work. So I agree that sometimes there is that perception that and also the visibility that is mostly male leaders in, in these spaces. But I agree, um, Sarah, you're the you're the um, you're the librarian. Make sure that you have Doris's story. She's gonna be really important to the history of Harvard. I am sure. So that, so I see Sarah's <laughs> opening it up. We, we do want to open it up, but I but I also want to say I want to give credit to the filmmaker too, who is also a woman, right and. You know, there's this, there is a question, you know, history, you know, history, history is hidden, history is hidden. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's, I, so I think, and, 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 and the kind of story of the journey that she took in terms of finding this story and kind of uncovering and being determined, she wasn't going to give up. Uh, and you know, and I mentioned earlier to you, Yareli, that you know it, this. She re, uh, Maria reminds me of Fannie Lou Hamer, uh, and you know who who also was an unbelievable dynamo and and, and and organizer and worker. And many people know, but many people don't know who she is. And uh, you know, I think these you know these getting these stories documented and told and preserved. Uh, is really is really critical. So so yes, we need to make sure <laughs> that that we that we do this. That, that nobody's going to have to go looking <laughs> for your story, Doris. <laughs> or looking to connect. You know, I'm watching as the university responds to, you know, um, a critical moment in I think American history is by creating multiple multiple new positions to deal with this. But as you both have shown us. The solutions are within the structures that we already have in place. So adding more positions and more uh, consultations, it's not listening to, and, and I loved how Doris said, we have to show them because they just don't get it. You know, they just can't think, they can't think beyond themselves to say, we need PPE if we're cleaning in these rooms, you know, and and, and it's it's pathetic. And I, and I wonder if it's, um, you know, the entire structure of either a male dominant structure or a, a, a structure so soaked in elitism that, that they can't see beyond what, um, what you're both pointing out to us so eloquently, you know, and so and how these conversations come together with, you know, good common sense and, and the courage to speak out because I think what you're we're both, you know, whether it's, you know, I, I, you know, as a grad student think, oh my gosh, if I talk against the system, how will I get a degree from them? If I talk against my boss, how will they hire me? And so your voices to be courage, courageous in this is really uh, so powerful. So thank you. Thank you for leading us. Yeah. I do want to give a chance if there are people, if they're, if they're, uh, if there are members of the of the rest of the collective here who have some questions that they'd like to ask, I want to give you a chance to do that before we, before we have to wrap up. Um, or, and if not, I'll let you all kind of close out with some 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 comments and you know some some ideas. And I, including you know, one thing that I I always want us to do is is if there are things that we need to or can be doing that to to assist or to back or to participate. Uh, along with your efforts to, to let us know those things or put them in the chat or let us know to share them. 
So you say there are negotiations going on now. We know, you know, this. You can give us an update on, on, on the Cornell West issue, and uh, you know, whatever we can and should be doing. Yeah, I mean, I think you all know, but I think Cornell is gone, and Lorja Garcia Pena will be leaving after this year. Um, okay, so I, I have the information. We're gonna be doing. Uh, a Zoom bargaining session tomorrow, Thursday from 2 to 5 p.m. And then you can just contact Brandon Mancilla, who is the president of our union. And essentially, uh, as you all know, Harvard is really hesitant to give some of the stipulations of the contract that are still missing. And some of those are making sure that graduate students who are parents have access to childcare, which is really expensive, uh, to be able to have benefits and health, other healthcare um, to children and spouses, which we don't currently have, but also to have a place where we can go to talk about like sexual harassment or any other type of discrimination that people might be experiencing. Are we, as we all know, there are certain departments right now that are on the spotlight, including the Department of Anthropology and Policy, who are going through a lot. And so we, uh, the union is trying to find ways for graduate students to do precisely that, what Sarah was talking about, to be able to speak freely without having to suffer the repercussions of it. So we're trying to establish kind of like a third party person who will look over cases of people who who are calling out discrimination and other sexual harassment. Um, that is really important. And then, yeah, we need a lot of support from the community to make sure that our contract gets ratified and everything that we demand happens. It's a small order, but we're up for it. <laughs> Doris, I remember at the beginning of the pandemic that the university was talking about financial cutbacks and contract workers. And there was our uh, securitas. A lot of the security workers had um, compromised work schedules. Can you tell us a little bit about um, maybe the situation? Yeah, yeah. This is, you know, happening like, uh, was a, a moment that Harvard sent us home, but they continue pay like, you know, like it will work. But in June of last year, they, they say they will stop because they can pay. And we start organized. I think that, and we work uh, the whole unions in the Harvard, we come in unit and, and, and organize and they continue to, to pay. But this year in January, they, They miss some money in the check, like, and, and, and you know, for for us, the, we live check by check. Lost the the thirty percent was hard, and what did they doing is relocate custodials, but we had to decide accept temporary, change the schedule, you know, and it's so hard for people have kids like me, and many of them like maybe they work in the morning and they had to work at night. So it was many change, but now we start working like to return back the custodials because the university ready bring everybody back. I think just we have couple people out, but and they, they you know, we start make sure they give uh, their normal schedule because when the people accept the changes was temporary just because of the pandemic, but now they had to put everybody back in their own schedule. But Saint, we start organized because we will fighting this year. We will have a negotiation because last year just uh, we agreed to have one year extension of our contract. And now we start organized again because we will start negotiation on September. And I hope the student can hold that negotiation until we go in the table too for everybody got the same time. I know, I believe we have more power 
if all the union are in the table in same time. And in the couple's days, we will run in a petition because we want to know what will happen after June 30th for people, you know, still staying at home if the university will continue to pay uh, or, or they will bring everybody back. And now the, the union already asked them and we're waiting for the answer, what will happening. But if we don't have answer, we will run a petition if, like custodials, but also uh, I will, I think reach out uh, so different organization in Harvard, like if we can run in one uh, petition for Harvard community too, because it's, this is the powerful things we can do it. And like I mentioned, uh, uh, Harvard have uh, 200 TPS holders in the campus. And we know what's happening now with TPS and we continue to organize. Uh, we I am still working in someone interesting and support the campaign, the campaign for permanent residency. Also, uh, you know, we have a lot of events just we finished the hangar strike in Washington, D.C. I was in hangar strike. And yeah, uh, we, you know, when we come into the organizer, we have many things to do. I welcome to everybody to come in to support us. So I think we have our marching orders and our marching opportunities. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, I, I want to thank everybody for being here. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful that, that we were able to share this film. And, and as I always do, you know, I encourage all of you to let other people know about this film. I mean, I, do, I think we've been really fortunate to show some remarkable films this year. And, uh, you know, we really need to to make sure that others see them. And, and I don't know if there are ways to use this film, for, for instance, in, in organizing work, um, but you know, it's something to think about. And if, if we can be helpful in that, I, I, I would love for us to be helpful in that. Um, so, and I'm not sure, I'm following the chat, I'm not sure whether I, I missed a con, I missed Lee, did you have your hand up uh, as earlier? Did you have a question? Well, um, it, it was it was already mentioned the question of alumni support, its presence or absence, but someone raised that already on the chat. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, listen. With with that, I think I'm going to 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 to, to thank everybody and thank uh, Sarah and Coco who who did come in briefly from class, but <laughs> but hopefully she's she's chilling a little bit right now. And uh, so, as Sarah said, we have one more coming up on May 26th. Is that right, Sarah? Yeah, and I would encourage you, you know, that's our last one of the season. So I'm going to try to send out emails to our a participation list and come with come with your needs, your support, your petitions. Uh, let's stay in touch and, and you know think of as I offered think of the library and librarians as part of this network. Um, I, I said we're probably 750 strong uh, that and we love to connect across campus and um, but also I think as as Lee points out there's the alumni groups there's uh, the Charles Hamilton Houston Institute uh, the Hugsies uh, School of Education, and um, and Arlene Brock is here, and there's also the Advanced Leadership Initiative. You know, so we're not alone in these fights, but we gotta uh, know that each other is here for us. And thank you both for reminding us that together we're stronger. So, uh, if I could say unidad in uh, forza in unidad is your yeah. Thank you. So. Yeah, last words. Last words. Arlene, you, I see you now. Were you going to say something? Oh, thank you. No, just thank you very much. That was an extraordinary film and an even more extraordinary discussion. Thank you all for your organizing. Yeah. All, right. all right, on that note, that's a perfect one, OK? <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you.